In the stillness of the night, when silence blanketed the world, a single piece of news shattered the calm and left nations in shock. This was not an ordinary incident, nor a simple test flight gone wrong. It was a moment that redefined the very foundation of air combat history. At the center of this storm stood Sweden's newest creation, the Grapen E, a jet that many had underestimated, dismissed as a smaller contender in the race of giants, but one that had silently prepared to unveil its true power. For years, the world had been focused on the dominating figures of air warfare, America's F-35, Russia's Su-57, and China's J-20. They were labeled as the apex predators of the skies, the ultimate expression of modern aerial supremacy. Yet, on that night, the Grapen E demonstrated something that none of them had fully mastered. It wasn't just speed, stealth, or weapons. It was a fusion of intelligence, adaptability, and a kind of precision that seemed almost unnatural. Reports began to emerge from an undisclosed exercise where the Gripen E faced off against some of the most advanced fighters of NATO. What followed felt less like a war game and more like a glimpse into the future of air combat. Radar systems failed to lock onto the Gripen. Missiles that should have tracked it simply veered off into emptiness. Pilots who thought they had the upper hand suddenly found themselves locked in the jet's crosshairs. Something about the Gripen's electronic warfare suite had completely rewritten the rules of engagement. Experts who analyzed the incident described it as the death of predictability in air combat. For the first time, a lightweight fighter had outmaneuvered and outsmarted billion-dollar platforms designed to dominate the battlefield. This wasn't just a victory. It was a revelation. A revelation that left generals, analysts, and defense ministers stunned, wondering how such a breakthrough had been kept hidden until now. And then came the whispers. Was this just the beginning? Was the Gripen E merely showing a fraction of what it could do? Some believed the jet carried classified systems so advanced that even its closest allies weren't aware of their true potential. Others claimed that the secret wasn't just in its technology, but in the way it had been designed, built not to be the biggest or loudest, but the smartest and most unpredictable. By dawn, the story had spread across a continent. Headlines blazed with words like historic, shocking, and unprecedented. The Gripen E had not only won a simulated battle, it had redefined the very concept of aerial dominance. The world was forced to confront an unsettling truth. The balance of power in the skies had shifted and nothing would ever be the same again. As the sun rose over Europe, the story of the Gripen E spread like wildfire through intelligence circles, news outlets, and secret defense briefings. What had happened in the skies the previous night was no longer being dismissed as just an exercise. It was now being discussed in hushed tones as a potential turning point in modern warfare. Diplomats asked for urgent reports. Generals demanded classified debriefings. Meanwhile, in Stockholm, Swedish officials maintained an eerie silence, as if they had been expecting this storm all along. The Grapen E was no stranger to controversy. For years, critics had called it the underdog, a jet too small and too light to stand against the heavyweights of the world. Nations investing billions into F-35s and Su-57s mocked the idea that Sweden's modestly priced aircraft could ever compete. But the truth revealed itself in the skies. Power was no longer about size, but about intelligence. While other jets carried weighty technology, 
The Gripen carried agility, systems that could be reprogrammed mid-flight, sensors that adapted like living organisms, and electronic warfare tools that made enemy radars blind. Witness accounts from the simulation painted a chilling picture. An F-35 pilot described the moment he realized something was wrong. His instruments showed nothing. His radar gave him silence. And yet the Gripen appeared out of nowhere on his six o'clock, locking on before he could react. Another pilot admitted that his missile had launched perfectly, only to spiral off course as if something had hijacked its brain. It wasn't just that the Gripen was hard to see. It was actively rewriting the battle as it unfolded. Defense analysts scrambled to piece together how this was possible. Some speculated that Sweden had developed an entirely new class of electronic warfare algorithms, programs capable of hacking enemy missiles mid-air. Others pointed to its data link system, which allowed multiple Gripens to fight as if they were one single unified machine. If one aircraft spotted danger, all the others saw it instantly. If one targeted an enemy, all the others shared the same precision. It was as though the Gripen E wasn't a single jet, but part of a living, breathing swarm. By mid-afternoon, NATO headquarters in Brussels called for an urgent review. The question on every table was the same. How could a jet that cost a fraction of the F-35 suddenly outclass it in combat. Billions of dollars had been poured into stealth fighters, yet here was a leaner, faster, cheaper machine embarrassing them in front of the world. Some NATO officials downplayed it, calling the incident anomalous. But deep inside the classified reports, there was no hiding the truth. The Gripen E had done what no one thought possible. Behind the scenes, whispers of conspiracy began to surface. Had Sweden secretly partnered with another nation? Were there hidden technologies at play? Quantum processors, experimental jamming systems, or even AI-driven flight control? The secrecy surrounding the Grapen program only fueled the mystery. Even Swedish pilots refused to speak openly, their responses rehearsed, their eyes betraying the fact that they had witnessed something extraordinary. The world's reaction split into two camps. Some countries began quietly reaching out to Sweden, exploring the possibility of purchasing the Gripen E before its price skyrocketed. Others, feeling threatened, pushed for immediate countermeasures, upgrades to their own fleets, or in some cases, aggressive political pressure to contain Sweden's growing influence. For the first time in decades, a small neutral country had tilted the scales of global military balance. And then came the most unsettling detail. Satellite records showed that during the exercise, at least one Gripen had completely vanished from detection. Not just stealthy, but invisible. No radar, no infrared, no trace on any electronic system. It was as if the jet had slipped into another dimension and reappeared at will. Experts refused to believe it, labeling it an error. But the pilots who saw it firsthand knew otherwise. By evening, one thing was certain. The Gripen E had not only rewritten air combat, it had rewritten the future. Questions hung heavy in the air. If this was what the world had just seen, what else was Sweden hiding? Was this the peak of the Gripen's power, or only the beginning of a darker, more astonishing secret waiting to unfold? As the world waited for answers, one truth could no longer be denied. Air combat history had been reset. The old rules no longer applied, and the sky now belonged to the unexpected. Night descended once again, but the world no longer looked the same. 
Governments were restless, air forces unsettled, and military think tanks worked through the darkness, dissecting every shred of data they could gather about the Gripen E. Yet despite all the analysis, there was one detail they could not escape. The Swedish jet had shattered their confidence in the systems they once believed invincible. In Washington, a high-level meeting convened at the Pentagon. Generals, scientists, and intelligence officers sat in silence as classified footage of the Gripen's performance was replayed again and again. The expressions on their faces told the story. Shock, disbelief, and a creeping realization that billions invested in their fleet had been undermined by a jet that cost a fraction. One official whispered the unthinkable. If we face this in real combat, we will lose control of the skies. Meanwhile, in Moscow, the atmosphere was equally tense. Russian analysts compared the Gripen E's maneuvers to their own Su-57, a jet often advertised as the pinnacle of stealth and agility. Yet, the Gripen had moved with a ghost-like unpredictability that even the Su-57 struggled to match. Chinese military experts, too, watched nervously, realizing that their J-20, designed to dominate Asia, might already be outdated. Across the globe, an uncomfortable truth set in. The air dominance everyone had assumed belonged to, superpowers was suddenly in question. But the mystery only deepened. Rumors leaked from inside Sweden suggested that the Grapen E that stunned the world wasn't even operating at full capacity. Some systems were deliberately disabled during the exercise to prevent revealing their maximum potential. If true, then the world had only witnessed a glimpse of what the jet could truly do. The thought alone was enough to make even the most confident nations reconsider their strategies. Journalists began chasing leads, and soon another layer of intrigue surfaced. Reports hinted at a hidden Swedish research program dating back decades, focusing on advanced signal manipulation and adaptive AI. Unlike other nations that poured resources into sheer size and firepower, Sweden had quietly invested in brains over brawn, systems that learned, adapted, and evolved during battle. It was whispered that the Gripen didn't just fly under human command, but alongside an artificial intelligence that could predict enemy behavior and counter it in real time. One pilot who allegedly flew the Gripen E under strict secrecy described the experience as flying with a shadow that already knows what the enemy will do before they do it. His statement was quickly buried, but the leak had already reached intelligence agencies worldwide. Was Sweden hiding a combat AI? And if so, had they just unlocked the next era of warfare where machines think faster than humans? As questions mounted, Sweden's silence became louder than words. No press conferences, no denials, no confirmations. The Gripen E's mystery became a psychological weapon in itself. Nations were forced to prepare for a jet whose limits they could not measure, a foe they could not predict. The impact was not limited to militaries alone. Global markets shifted, defense stocks trembled as buyers questioned the worth of expensive programs like the F-35. Smaller nations, long unable to afford high-end fighters, suddenly saw the Grapen as their chance to tip the scales. Sweden, once a quiet, neutral country, had become the most courted power in aviation almost overnight. But hidden beneath all the chaos was a chilling possibility. Analysts noticed strange anomalies during the Gripen's flights, patterns in radar data that did not align with normal physics. It was as if the jet manipulated the very electromagnetic spectrum itself, 
bending signals in ways that shouldn't be possible with current technology. Some experts whispered about experimental quantum systems, others suggested classified propulsion tricks, and a few dared to ask if Sweden had uncovered something beyond conventional science. By the end of the week, one thing was undeniable. The Gripen E had not just rewritten air combat, it had forced the world to question the future of warfare itself. If a small nation could field such power, what other secrets were waiting to be revealed? And perhaps the most frightening question of all, had the age of human-dominated air combat quietly ended, replaced by machines that could outthink and outfight anything we had ever known? The world remained in shock, nations scrambling for answers. But deep within Sweden, the Gripen E rested silently in its hangar, its secrets guarded, its potential still hidden, and its legacy already carved into history as the fighter jet that changed everything.